Hello everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the show The Falcon and the Winter Soldier that aired last March. Uh, I watched this last year. I've just gone back through a quick scan to have a discussion about what I thought about the series. You know, the characters that developed, the reintroductions, what it means for the future. Obviously, spoilers ahead if you haven't seen it. It's only six episodes. It takes about six hours roughly to watch. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and enjoy. Let me know down below what you thought of the Falcon and the Soldier. One of the more underappreciated of the Marvel shows that we've had in the past um, year and a half, roughly. So, yes, let me know what you think. So, Falcon and the Soldier, if you didn't know, tells the story of Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes, you know, after the death of Cap. Uh, I think death, you know, he was back and now he's old. Um, so he's no longer in their lives, basically, after the, the aftermath of Endgame, uh, the Blit, Infinity War, all this jazz that's gone down. So what I've loved about this film, a film, TV show, you're dealing with all this, there's, there's a lot of there's racism in this show uh, that it deals with. Um, guilt, like Boogie Barnes, as when he was the Winter Soldier, he, he's very close with this guy he, he's a neighbor of. And basically, during his Winter Soldier period, he had killed this man's son. And he, he throughout the entire show, he's living with this guilt of whether you should tell him, you know. He, he knows it's not his fault, but it's still he was the one who did it. You know, his, his, his hands his, uh, have the blood on it. He's the one who, you know, if anyone wants to blame, it's him. So I'm basically going to say, you know, then you go back to Anthony Mackie's character who is trying to find his way in this world. Now he's been given the shield. And for most of the season, he gives up the shield to the museum and it ends up going to Walker in the end. Who I, you know, I think he's a, he's a great character, but, you know, the serum gets into his body eventually, you know, he injects himself. He wants to become a winter soldier. He lets the whole Captain America thing goes to his head. He ends up bashing someone's head in later in the series with the shield. And you're dealing with two characters who, you know, Boogie Barnes believes, you know, the, the shield should have been on so honorable. He knows he should never have got it. And that's, I, I'm glad they put it in there because the fans are so adamant that he should have gone to Bucky, and Bucky does not deserve the shield because he has done so much wrong in himself. Sam Wilson's always done selfless acts, helping him win a soldier, you know, being there for Cap during Infinity War and then returning in um, Endgame to assist him in the, in the win over Thanos. These two are head-class the entire time. It's back and forth, back and forth. You know, they're, they're helping each other, you know, when it deals with John. They, they know not to trust him. Um, all the stuff with Sharon Carter involved and her eventually being a villain was a bit stupid, in my opinion, because Steve's gone now. If Steve was still here, she would not be doing all this villainy stuff. But because Steve's gone, she believes she has the God-given right to be the villain of something. And maybe she will be the main villain of, spoilers, Captain America 4, which is in production now, with obviously most likely Sebastian and Anthony both likely to return. Sam, obviously, definitely. Bucky, you think so. Um, I think John's going to return in some shape or form, becoming the US agent at the end of the series, where he gets rid of the blue and becomes a gets a black outfit and is working towards the Thunderbolts, if they're going down that direction anymore, with General Ross, um, his actor, being obviously diagnosed with cancer in real life and then dying. I think, I think it was cancer. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, he is sadly passed away and we never got to see him as the Red Hulk that we know of. He, he may have filmed scenes in She-Hulk, but I'm going to go on out on a limb and say they've been cut, um, depending on how it works for the continuity of the series going forward. But we'll have to wait and see. And maybe that's why She-Hulk's been slightly delayed. Um, uh, yeah, the relationship between these two was phenomenal. The development from start to finish, you know, everything they went through, as I said, dealing with Walker, um, dealing with Baron Zemo was the main threat of the series, and he became the most interesting and likable part about the whole series. They had the Winter Soldier esque people, you know, people, the, the, the Russian group, the, who took the serum. I thought they were okay, mediocre villains at best. They brought a lot to the series in the sense of strength and fight scenes, but in they were they were just there, you know. 
Baron Zemo and John Walker, what you what was what were you here for? Someone who took on the shield and tried to be Steve, but could not be Steve, and ultimately had to be Sam, who eventually took on the shield at the end of the series, practicing with it, wielding it, and eventually he took on the guy who was a Winter Soldier who Steve fought. Uh, he fought against um, George Saint Pierre, who played Batroc, who I thought was a great reintroduction to the series. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he didn't die again. I'm pretty sure he's just someone who likes to appear, get his ass whooped, and then never appear again. But brilliant, introducing characters like that, keeping all these characters in the same world. I've spoke about this in, like, Moon Knight and stuff. You have specific areas of characters who will just be bulked into one, but still allow them to cross over to other paths and worlds. Hence why I believe Sharon will be the main villain in Cap 4. Baron Zemo will probably be involved in Black Panther 2, as obviously the tribe of women who obviously Okoye is in charge of came to the aid of Sam and Bucky fighting <clears throat> them and, and um, Baron Zemo ultimately arresting him. He was a brilliant uh, anti-villain. He assisted them at times. He was against them at times. But ultimately, he made the series what it was. Falcon and Winter Soldier is obviously such a brilliant title because by the end of it, they, they become Captain America and the Grey Wolf, as um, T'Challa once nicknamed him when he was in Wakanda getting a new arm. Um, I love the whole stuff with um, the secret Winter Soldier, Isaiah Bradley, and his son Eli Bradley, who is obviously set to become Patriot in the future. Um, I thought that was brilliant, how they constantly went back every now and again, and by the end of it, he got a statue, which was one of the most beautiful scenes in the whole series. Six episodes, but they filled it with so much story and Winter Soldier rest stuff. It was a huge homage to Steve's legacy, to Isaiah Bradley's legacy. These people who fought in the war as soldiers, more than just soldiers, soldiers with serum in them. And, you know, Bucky coming to the the realisation he had to tell the old man about his son, about him killing him, distance himself from him, and him becoming an outcast. These two becoming friends. Him, help, you know, Sam helping out his sister with his boat issues, um, you know, being refused a loan because they blipped for five years. The racism from the cops, you know, in the street where he's with um, Bucky, and then he they make a big scene of it. And because he recognises him as Falcon eventually, it becomes normal that they just let him go you know the cameos from war machine you know I, i'm looking forward to seeing him return to armor wars so much about this show was just brilliant i spoke about one division of how much i loved that show you know reflecting on it now you know i've not spoke about falcon and falcon and Winter soldier as much as i'd like to but sam wilson and and uh, bucky barnes are two of my all-time favorites because i loved captain america and what chris evans did for the role steve rogers he made these two characters more likable he's made the the uh, Hydra world more likable, this part of the MCU. And I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. Again, there's always going to be flaws and issues, but again, I had such a fantastic time. The villains were very meh, but still good. John Walker was fantastic at what he did. Um, he, uh, oh my God, Sharon Carter. She was a good character, but the villainy stuff didn't make sense to me and why she's going down that road. Baron Zemo was an absolute beast in this and Daniel Brühl did a phenomenal job he's one of the best villains they've ever they've ever had part of the MCU he's up there you know with Tom Hiddleston you Josh Brolin to Thanos uh, the list goes on I absolutely adored this series and I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 most of the TV shows are always going to get perfect scores to an extent um because of what they do because of what they how much time they don't really have but what they get done in the time I spoke about Hawkeye, and Hawkeye was a true example of what a brilliant show is. Same with this, same with WandaVision. Loki is next on my list, and then we'll be reviewing the What If episodes individually for the nine episodes, and then hopefully all that will be done, and then Miss Marvel will be here, and then we'll be all up to date, and then we will be starting the MCU film, starting with Iron Man and ending with... Uh, the one before Black Widow, which might have been Endgame. Or was it Spider-Man? might have been Spider-Man. Uh, yes, it was Spider-Man Far From Home. So, 
they are coming. I'm trying to get through the TV shows. There's a lot I want to bring to the channel, but I'm doing these as a collective. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you agree with some things I have to say. Uh, if you have any you know, things you didn't like about the Falcon when it sold, just let me know down below. I'll have a discussion with you, of course. Everyone's got their own opinions. I had minor issues with this because I love these characters. Um, and sometimes the most basic shows are sometimes the best shows because they don't overcomplicate what can be. Again, I'm looking forward to the future of Captain America 4, the Thunderbolts, uh, Black Panther 2, if Zemo is to appear there. But obviously, we'll get to see the tribe of women from Black Panther appear as well this fall. Thanks for watching. As always, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and of course, catch you in the next one. Goodbye.